Hey there, this is Chief, and this is episode seven now of uh, Bullpen. Uh, tried this before doing a layout on um, Lucid Press, and uh, just want to try and make it easier, uh, maybe go a little bit slower, uh, faster, <laughs> but definitely have uh, sound this time. Last time we didn't have sound, so this should work. So uh, we'll just get going. Right. Uh, this is the site that you want to use, uh, advisors. If uh, you're looking for a way to, to teach design and your kids don't have nice big machines or your school uh, doesn't have the money to get a license for uh, Adobe or InDesign or something like that. Um, or, I, you know, again, I don't know how Herf Jones or Prestige or any of the other lab- uh, uh, yearbook companies uh, do it, but... Um, now, we just finished ours and turned it in, and we have Justin's, and so not quite ready to start the new one yet. Uh, they do have things for practice pages and, and uh, saving things as templates, uh, but, um, you know, or, or you just don't have your staff yet. Uh, all of my staff, I have uh, text phone numbers and, and uh, email addresses, and those aren't the kids that are in class. I don't know who's going to be in the class until August, so... Uh, it's free. It's web-based. Um, I don't know whether or not you can do it on a tablet or a phone. I, I, I think I've had some kids that say you can, but uh, it works great. We have one-on-one, but we have Chromebooks, so they're netbooks, so they don't really have programs on them. Uh, but uh, And I hope that they don't change because they're, uh, this is just a great, great tool, and I should have been using it for years. I've only used it for maybe a year and a half or so. Um, anyway, tell you a little bit about what you want in any layout. There's elements, things you can wrap your head around real easy. You can see they're obvious, and there's principles, things that you kind of got to gotta learn. And your advisor can advise you on this. Uh, I can for those of you that are on my staff. Uh, the more you work on them, the better you get at them. Um, but uh, in, in art, you would have uh, uh, elements like uh, uh, line, color, shape, you know, texture, shading uh, on this. Let's keep it simple. Keep it down to three. You're going to have your pictures, images. You're going to have your copy. That's what we in the biz refer to. Uh, uh, the, any text it can be headline, caption, or uh, story. Stories usually they talk about the body of the paragraph, so body copy. And third thing is space. And if you uh, basically, there's three kinds of people that end up being advisors for your book. There's the business teachers because they got the technology and and maybe sell ads and understand marketing. There's the English and journalism teachers that are actually going to teach you how to write a story. How about that? Uh, and art teachers like me uh, that uh, they think that oh they can do it because they know photography or they know layout and design. I've got a little bit more. Uh, background than typical art teacher maybe in publications, but uh, basically uh, negative space is what we call it in art, but white space is what we call it in page design and publications. And uh, you know, watch and listen, you know, it's real, real good. Here's some principles. The thing that drives me nuts, and maybe it's because I'm old, maybe it's because I have a little bit of a background in newspaper, uh, but. Um, you just, just don't throw stuff together. You don't just slap it together. You know, it's not like, oh, here's a bunch of pictures and take the glue stick and glue it down on a piece of paper. You know, that is going to drive anybody crazy that actually does scrapbooking. You know, um, I always tell kids that it needs to look like it's on purpose and with purpose. Okay, so you want to do it, make it look deliberate. Now, granted. There's time and place for chaos, and there's also the, the whole thing about rules being broken. But uh, Picasso said something along the lines of, you know, you got to know the rules before you can break them. Hey, okay. um, so unity means that everything in your page looks like it belongs, looks like it goes together. It's working together like a team. You know, you don't just have one person that's a, ho- a ball hog or hot dogger that is going to do uh, everything for you. Everything needs to look like it goes together. So unity. Uh, So synonyms may be harmony, structure, cohesiveness. Uh, Moving on. Hierarchy. This is one that a lot of art teachers don't get. 
but graphic designers and designers and engineers, they know that this is helpful. So this is kind of important. It um, gives our eyes a break. It helps our eyes to know what to look at. Okay, you kind of one, two, three. It's like instead of jumping into the pool, you walk down the steps into the shallow end of the pool. Hierarchy. You now, um, examples of a hierarchy are rank, like in the military, or uh, you learn in your British history, and you got who's the king, who's the prince, who's the the duke, who's the uh, uh, marquis, who's the baron. Right? There's levels, levels of importance. So. Um, We've got a couple of things. If I bring my mousey in here, right? Hierarchy in images. You're going to see when I start designing, I want to have one large picture, two or three medium-sized pictures, two or three small pictures. One, two, three. Big, medium, small. Important, kind of important, less important. And hierarchy, again, will work with copy. Now, generally, it's primary headline, sub-headline, uh, and then is there an additional headline or um, uh a uh, quick read or something that is kind of uh, maybe uh, uh, some facts or infographic kind of, you know, that's part text and part visual, you know, but uh, you can have headlines, body copy and captions, you know, uh, so there's hierarchy there too. Um, moving on, you know, proximity is how, where are you, you know, in relationship to each other, closeness. Okay, so uh, previous episode, we're talking about elements of newsworthiness, proximity. Is it happening in your school or your town or your state or somewhere else? You know, if it's close to you, proximity, it's, it's, it's close, it's more important. Well, one way that you build unity is proximity. If uh, like on a yearbook or a magazine page, uh, all the pictures and text have to do with the same thing, you know, keep them close together. About a pica is what we call it, a unit of measurement that's about an eighth of an inch, 12 points, 72 points in an inch, um, 12 points in a pica. Anyway, uh, they're closer together, but there's also hierarchy you know, so if they're not related to each other, then they probably need to be not one pica apart, but two picas apart, you know, a quarter of an inch apart. Not wherever, not like three or four inches from each other on a little eight-inch page. Um, you know, so one way to think of it is kind of a, a, it's like it's a force field, but it's a magnetic force field. They're drawn to each other, but they're not going to touch each other they're they, they they can't quite touch each other so they're drawn to each other but they're also repelled by each other it's like siblings you know <laughs> brothers and sisters anyway so three elements three principles so move fast sorry I, if i'm talking too fast go into uh, uh youtube and your settings and slow this down or for goodness sake stop you know, especially if, you're, if there's any teachers or if there's anybody out there that is really hyper-organized and they want to take notes on this, you, you keep a bullet journal and it's going to help you design. You know, But I want to keep talking because I don't want this to be 20, 30 minutes, especially for my kids. Um, six steps. And I talked about these six steps uh, the last time, but of course I didn't have any audio, so that video is almost worthless. I mean, <laughs> anyway, um, first step is what's your structure going to be and your margins around the outside and do you have any columns or some kind of a grid system on the inside second step big picture what is your anchor image that dominates the page the emphasis is there uh when i was learning about this stuff like a junior in high school ball state university at uh, the journalism workshop that they held uh they call it a center of visual interest. It's not centered. Okay? It should always be a little bit off center probably for good design, but it draws your attention. Okay, So it gets your interest. So it's the center of visual interest, CVI. I am taking a calling it an anchor. Uh, high line, eye line, eye line, or eye flow line. Okay? Uh, usually... Um, goes along the bottom could conceivably go along the top of your anchor image and it has to do with space and proximity and we'll talk about that uh, and then step four 
get your headline in there. If you have got a module of quotes or a module of uh, a story, you know, that's the time to put that in there. Step five is your next photos. And uh, last time I taught it, I split this into two steps because I'd have the secondary pictures and then smaller pictures. Uh, and then step six, last thing is getting those captions on there. Uh, captions or cut lines, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so let's get to it. Go into this lovely, wonderful program, Lucid Press. Okay, you're probably going to have to sign in with your email. Uh, reason for that is uh, so that they can save your documents for you so you can come back and they're still there. Uh, yeah, they would love to sell you, like any website that's out there, try to get you to do their premium and subscribe to it. And I'm sure that it is probably worth it if you're a professional graphic designer, but your kids, your students, uh, most of you, or teachers, educators. Uh, I hope that they don't change this. I, I kind of, when we were using it last month of school, what we found out is that if you are using the free version, you only get like three documents. So if you want to make a new document, you have to choose what you're going to get rid of. At any rate, here's what you're going to do. They have tons and tons of templates. They've got templates for stuff that will probably be social media, but like I, uh, uh said in a previous episode, I want to try and teach my kids or encourage my kids to try Canva because Canva is kind of the leader uh, in that kind of design. But paper things, you know, uh, menu, resume, uh, uh, poster, postcard, flyer, marketing, um, you name it. If there's print, they've got um, the thing about templates is kind of like clip art. People have like the sixth sense, even if they're not well trained in education or in graphic design or in publications, they can kind of tell that it's cookie cutter, you know. So my advice is if you're going to use templates, um, alter them, you know, change them up and not necessarily just by changing the wording or adding your pictures, but change some of the graphics, make something that's small, bigger, make something that's big, smaller. Uh, but you're not going to use a template from this case. You're going to hit on documents. I have tons of documents because I've been using it uh, this last quarter of school. But you, you're not going to have any. Okay? But when you hit documents and maybe it's all empty, you're going to have this blue button. Uh, I've said before, this is a, a clone to Adobe InDesign, so uh, advisors might be cool for you if you've got a web, uh, sorry, if you've got a laptop and maybe you've got some of these programs like Creative Suite or InDesign or Photoshop, you know, you can upload a document that you've created in InDesign to Lucid Press and make it be a template for your kids. But for this purpose, we're just going to hit new. Okay, and notice a new, it, one of your choices is you want to create a new folder. These are great because you can keep, it's like a project management. You can keep different documents in a folder so you know where they're at. You, know, uh, you can see I have one particular assignment. Um, this is for uh, eighth grade art class. So this is a commercial art class. This is a personal thing for church, our art club. Da -da 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 -da. You can also keep different pictures in there when you upload them. But you want to hit blank document, not from template, not folder, blank document. It's going to give you one page document. I should show it here shortly. Good coffee. I'll just take a swig while you're waiting for our screen to boot up. I kind of like that uh, not only they give you a typical loading bar, but they have these you know, somewhat inspiring quotes from designers about design, like there are three responses to a piece of design, yes, no, or wow, and wow is what you're aiming for. Um, so that's kind of cool if you're a design geek. And maybe what you do is you look those guys up, you know, research them, find out what do they design, when did they live, who did they work for. What kind of influence do they have on the industry? Uh, I compiled a list of names that I have my commercial art kids research. I should have your kids research it. Don't worry. I won't. Okay. Eventually, this is going to pop up. Right? Come on. Eventually, it'll pop up. 
if I knew anything about editing these videos instead of just recording them, I'd edit this all out and not make you have to wait. Yeah. Tell you what I am going to do. Uh, you can do this while you're waiting. Um, I want to have some text, and I don't want to write it. Right? So uh, if I search up Gettysburg Address, I can just copy and paste that. Maybe you want to do uh, some Shakespeare or Declaration of Independence or some song lyrics or a poem. Right? And Grail and Poe's the, the Raven. Right? So anyway, some programs will have a thing. In fact, you might want to search this. I could have searched this. Lorem Ipsum. It's Latin. I don't know what it means because I don't speak Latin. But uh, if you're doing something just for the sake of design, we're not going to call it plagiarism because you're not turning it in like it's your own writing. You're just copying and pasting it so that you have something besides headline, 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 headline. Back in the day when I was uh, in high school, what we had was uh, – X's. You draw everything in X's. Okay. So they'll give you a nice blank page like this. Some of the first stuff that you want to look at is over here, uh, size and orientation. We want a letter size. Yep. We don't need a spread because we're only going to do one page. Uh, orientation, portrait, you know, up and down. Here's something cool though, these margins. Um, step one is dealing with margins and column or grid half inch margin so that says to me that each of these little squares is about a quarter of an inch okay remember i said a pica is about half of one of these squares it's about an eighth of an inch uh, and that's even approximate but what i would do is instead of having a different margin on all of these go in and um, just put a two before your five so you have quarter inch margins and then right away it did it for all four sides okay a couple other great things for you to have. You might be noticing is you don't have rulers, right? So where you don't have this grid. So go up here to where it says view and uh, press down view. And it will have these different cho choices for showing, you know, do you want to show your guides? Yeah. I'd like to show guides. Do I want to show a grid? Yeah. I want to show the grid. Do I want my objects to snap to grid? Or maybe I want my things to snap to the grid. A um, couple of things that I really like to have. I'm going to have to move this toolbar for Screencastify out of the way to show you this. If it will let me. Oh, no. Instead, it just moved me. Anyway. Um, going back to view. These are a couple. One, this is just me. I like off-page content. That means having stuff over here. You know, say this was a picture which it's not, but say that uh, I'm on the page. Oh, I don't like that there. I want that someplace else. I'm going to put something else here first. I move it over to the side. So that's what that means, that show off page content. Another great one, so it's off page. It's not show off. Another great one right here, show rulers. And I'll tell you one reason why it's great to have that is you can drag guides for yourself. Okay? So... Why don't we think about if this is about eight and a half, so we take off a half, so eight, so um, seems like about here is like half of my page maybe. I don't know if that's exactly half. So I'll have one guide there. Hopefully you can still see it's a lighter blue and all of these are kind of a gray. It's red or magenta as I'm moving it over. And since I want things to be a pica, and a pica is about half of a quarter inch, about an eighth of an inch. So I'm just kind of, mind you, oh, look at that. I got, I got it right on. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm sort of eyeballing it by, oh, by the way, over here is sort of a zoom thing that you can deal with. Okay. So we have steps one and two. We've got our margins and we've got some kind of a grid, right? Our two columns. Okay. So now it's time to get a picture on. So I pre-uploaded. Okay. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to manage 
and upload. So whether you have pictures in your downloads on your Chromebook or phone or tablet, if you're using that, or you're going to have to go someplace and collect some. You know, it, ideally, it's best if it's your own pictures. But since this is an academic exercise, you're not trying to sell it. But, um, you know, go harvest pictures however you will from Google Image Search or something. But uh, um, as I said before, you can create folders, and I've got one. Um, it's not really about President of the United States. It's it's paintings that I did, but they're historical figures. Some of them are presidents. So I'm going to go in here, and I am going to choose. Mr. Lincoln. Okay, do I have to double click? Open. There we go. Okay. And they're all going to come out. It, it should be kind of a standard size, um, probably like a four by six or six by four. Now, snapshot size. So you get prints made at uh, Walmart or Target or wherever you get prints made if you still do that. So maybe you only use your own printer. Our anchor picture, our center of visual interest should be bigger than everything else. So since they all kind of come out the same size, I'm going to start by making him a little bit bigger right off the bat. Okay? That's how you anchor. You're the big, the big gun, the big dog, the rock. Okay? So step one, margins and guides. Step two, our dominant image. Step three is an eye line or an eye flow line. Now, the theory is, and I'm going to violate this rule probably, uh, but especially if we had two pages instead of one page, okay, if we, we have a, set up a force field here, we don't want anything to cross this line, this barrier. Um, and what that'll do is that'll lead our viewer's eyes from left to right. And you'll see how I break this rule uh, in a little bit. But so step one is margins and columns or grid. Step two, anchor. Step three, eye line, ready for step four. Okay. Step four, I'm going to come over here and drop a headline. And I would encourage you, if you're taking a half an hour or an hour or two hours to play with this, or even if you only play with it for 15 minutes in time, but you come back to it, you know, you can choose all kinds of different fonts, all, all different kinds of colors. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can do with that headline. Okay. But uh, next, we're going to bring in um, my body copy. And I want it to be lined up pretty well, both with my picture and with my headline. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more just so I can see that. And one thing it takes a little getting used to, drives me nuts, is, you know, one way you're clicked on it, and it's a text tool, and you can edit that text or add or take it away. Uh, and another way, you, you get these arrows, and it's a block, okay, copy block, so that you can treat it like it's an image and you're moving it around. Okay, so I'm just going to go make it probably just about the depth of that picture. Why not? You know, um, and I tell my kids, you know, I, we have so few pages and we want to get pictures of as many kids as we can. You know, I'm not going to necessarily, I'm not an English teacher, so I'm not necessarily going to force you to write something, but it's good to know how to design with it. Okay. So I don't like that. It's too big and it's too bold. What do I do about it? Well, one Control Z on almost any program is going to undo the last thing that you did. Next thing that you did, as you can see while I'm talking to you, I've kind of messed up a little bit on where this should be anyway. Up, up, up. Okay. If you right click with your mouse or two finger click on your touchpad, you should be able to get a choice. Uh, but of course you could also do shift, but instead of control V, control shift V, plain text means it's going to enter it, not pre-formatted from the last document or website that you took it from, but um, in what format you're using. Uh, I'm not going to fit that whole speech in there, you know, and it's really just a text block holder. But I do want to have a little bit more, you know, have it like at a 9 or 10 point instead of uh, 11. Uh, already breaking that eye flow line. 
So I want to move it up there where it's not breaking the iPhone line. These are kind of cool. Left, center, right. If this was a caption, I'd probably want it to be flush right, jagged left, so that it works. But for a story like this, it might be good to be justified. And again, I can bring it up a little bit more so that it's underneath the headline like it should be. But I'm going too slow, so I'll let it go. Again, if you're working with this or you're playing with it, you're going to have a nine-point type. You might want to have it be not a sans serif, but uh, sorry, not a yeah, not a sans serif, but a serif type. That's uh, usually body copy is easier to read that way. You know, uh, you can even change color, all of those kinds of things. But let's move on. So now, um, one, two, three, four, right? Uh, now we got to go to step five. And then, and then we'll be at six, so we're almost done. So we're going to get the secondary pictures in there. Again, hierarchy. Got my big picture. Now I need some medium-sized pictures. Later on, maybe I'll go back in and get some smaller pictures. Um, let's wait for this to open. Come on. Laugh at me. There you go. Let's say that... Um, I'm going to deal with civil rights, right? Since I've got uh, the president who signed the Emancipation Proclamation here. So maybe I should bring in um, Rosa Parks. Notice it's a lot bigger than I want, so I'm going to need to shrink it. Um, other civil rights leaders like Dr. King. Malcolm X, a little more controversial than either of them. Okay, so I'll zoom back out and uh, try and move this back out of my way toolbar. Okay, um, so I probably want them, I might want to keep them around this size. Uh, and you can see, again, since they're all the same size, they kind of compete with each other for attention. Uh, because I've got a small layout, it's only one page, I think that maybe I should think about only having uh, uh, five pictures and not eight or nine or ten. And so if that's the case, then maybe I need a third layer, third level of pictures. Since Malcolm X is going off the page already anyway, if I move him, at least Pike, away from my copy, I can shrink him, and he is going to be my third level in those that hierarchy. Now, one, two, three, big, medium, small. Okay, and maybe even I go back. And um, a lot of designers talk about three, five, seven. You now being a good, uh, good rule. Uh, so since I've got four, I should probably have like a fifth. Right. I could go to seven, but that's going to start getting a little bit busy. So come on, open. Here we go. Great. Well, here's one of the things that you may want to consider when you're doing layouts is uh, I could do LBJ because he signed the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. Um, but maybe... Because he's facing the same way that Lincoln is. If I put him up here, he's going to take our attention off the page. He's looking away. So maybe I get a whole portrait here. Uh, sorry, profile instead of three-quarter or portrait with uh, uh, Bobby Kennedy, who was the attorney general <coughs> when Dr. King was in the Birmingham jail. Again, notice this is the, I can see it over here because I did that show off page content. Okay, uh, he's going to have to shrink. Now he might even end up being a, a fourth level of size, okay, because otherwise he's going off the page, and that would be called a bleed, and we won't see it. Well, what happens when I make him this small? I'm not happy with that. I think it's too small. I want him to be closer to Malcolm X's size. Uh, but if I have him this kind of nice medium size, not only is he bleeding off the page, but he 
goes into the text. So what's a designer to do, right? We'll go over here and we're going to crop. Okay. And awesome thing about cropping. I'm zooming in so you can see me do it is uh, I'm not permanently deleting all of this of the picture, but what I am doing is it's called masked right now. Uh, I try and line it up with that edge of the um, Malcolm X picture down there on the bottom and have a pica between Bobby Kennedy and my text and I can bring him in on the other side. So he's not bleeding. His head's not cut off. It's cropped. I hit enter and there. Right. I like much better. Might be the one of the things that you want to do is like a um, Malcolm X's picture here starts to fade away. Now, so maybe what you want to do, and usually for consistency's sake. You should do this to all your pictures then and not just the one. Now, you can choose to come up here and give them a, you know, a border and not just a, you know, one point or one pixel you know, or two. It's kind of smallish. Now, we're about done. I'm really, really sorry if this has gone into the 20-minute kind of thing. I just want to show you how you can save it now, right? So um, let's say that you're on my, you're in my Y Club, you're on the Archive Yearbook staff for Warrior Valley, and I want you to, I want you to send send me what you've been playing with. It's not for a grade because it's summer, but you've been playing around, and came up with something. You just want to show me that you can do it. Now go here to Download As. And, uh, yeah, you could attach an email, a PDF to me, uh, and that's fine. Okay? Um, smaller dots per inch is better. If you were going to use this for real in a yearbook, it would need to be 300, although I don't know that the free version um, of Lucid Press lets you do that. We only have one page, so we don't have to mess with the page range. Frankly, it's easier and faster to open it up and look at it if you send it to me like an image instead of, of – um, this is a print document, you know, portable document file. Uh, this is a portable network graphic, and, you know, it's great for posting stuff on the Internet. You know? So if you were going to do a social media thing like an Instagram post, uh, obviously you wouldn't probably do 8x10. But and then you download it, and then you can send it to me or – Upload it to our Sony if I do something like that. But thank you for your time. That is uh, doing a one-page layout, and I'd encourage you to try it. Just try it. It's not that hard. Pretend it's fun. It's your pictures. They don't have to be paintings or artworks. It's whatever you want. Have fun with it, for goodness sake. Okay? Um, you, you know, that's how you're going to learn. We'll see you next time. Have a